Hello, guten tag, bonjour, hello, and welcome to Assassin's Creed Origins Discovery Tour Extra. We're going to take a trip through ancient Egypt using this amazing video game. And for those of you that don't know about the Discovery Tour mode yet, it's a mode in which you can explore ancient Egypt without being interrupted by combat or quests. It's purely educational. The mode is a virtual museum without threats, but instead with guided tours and historical events and sites to discover. I'll be adding insights and taking a more in-depth look at the tours. I'd also like to thank the developers for including this feature in their scope of the video game. Edutainment strikes me as the way forward in education, and what better excuse is there to dive into Egyptology and continue research of my own? The Discovery Tour is a great platform from which to ask questions about these ancient peoples. Please join me on my journey as I ask the questions that naturally arise to see what we can learn about the characters, places and practices we come across. Here we start in Memphis. Welcome to the major regions of Egypt. Life in ancient Egypt was concentrated along the shores of the Nile and divided into two regions. Lower Egypt was situated on the Nile Delta near the Mediterranean, and Upper Egypt was at the south reaching into Africa. Due to its proximity to the Mediterranean, temperatures in Lower Egypt were less extreme than in Upper Egypt. Notice here that Lower Egypt on the Nile Delta is, perhaps contrary to intuitive belief, in the north. This is because Upper Egypt is where the River Nile starts and it flows down into the northern territory of Lower Egypt. Until 3100 BCE and the unification of Egypt, each region had its own pharaoh and crown. Lower Egypt's crown was red and marked with symbols of papyrus and bees. Upper Egypt's crown was white with symbols of lotus and sedge grass. Here we see a rock relief of King Nebepetro Mentuhotep II. The name Nebepetro means Lord of the Rudder is Re. Mentuhotep means the son of Re. So, who was this guy? We know that Mentuhotep II was a pharaoh that reigned for 51 years during the 10th dynasty, as according to the Turin King List, which is also known as the Turin Royal Canon. It's an ancient Egyptian papyrus written in hieratic, a cursive form of hieroglyphs thought to date back to the reign of Pharaoh Ramesses II. The papyrus is the most extensive list of kings compiled by the ancient Egyptians that we have available. It's the basis for most chronology before the reign of Ramesses II, during the middle of the New Kingdom, or the 19th dynasty. Here's an illustration of the remaining fragments. The 19th dynasty was roughly 13 centuries before the Common Era, or before Christ. That's more than 3,000 years ago. The records show the lineage of pharaohs all the way into the Old Kingdom of ancient Egypt, as far back as 3000 BCE, or 5000 years ago. Many Egyptologists have long considered two rock reliefs, showing Mentuhotep II towering over two smaller figures labelled King Intef to be conclusive evidence that his predecessor Intef III was his own father. This is, however, not entirely certain as these reliefs may have had other propagandistic purposes, and there are other difficulties surrounding Mentuhotep's true origin, such as his three name changes and frequent attempts to claim descent from various gods, as pointed out by Ian Shaw in the Oxford History of Ancient Egypt. The rock relief was found in the Saba Rigale Valley by Flinders Petrie, one of the first Egyptologists during the 19th century. His findings were published in a season in Egypt, it's freely available online. Taken from that book, 
Here is Petrie's pictograph of the rock relief, depicting a giant King Mentuhotep II, and on the right, Intef III, and the treasurer, Keti. Mentuhotep II was also the first pharaoh known to venture into southern Nubian territory. This is the first attested appearance of the term Kush for Nubia in Egyptian records. There is also evidence of military action against the Canaan, a Semitic group from the ancient Near East. Mentuhotep's viziers or second in command, a sort of vice president, were Bebi and Dagi. His treasurers were Keti and Meketra. The prior was also responsible for the Heb Sed festival, a festival devoted to the continuation of the king's rule. His overseer of sealers was Meru, also once referred to as overseer of the foreign lands. Presumably, he was a diplomat of sorts. Finally, Mentuhotep's general was called Intef. All in all, there's a lot of interesting stuff to learn about Mentuhotep, not least because of his domestic might whilst continuing to expand his borders simultaneously. He changed his Horus name twice during his reign. A Horus name is a kind of royal name. He changed it once after taking over Heracleopolis Magna and once upon reunification of Upper and Lower Egypt. He also reinstated a then dying tradition of adopting a five-fold titulary as used by pharaohs of the Old Kingdom. His achievements can be reviewed by looking at how his Horus name changed during his rule. He started off calling himself He Who Gives Hearts to the Two Lands, and then moved on to Lord of the White Crown, the White Crown being symbolic of Upper Egypt. Finally, he became known as Uniter of the Two Lands. Mentuhotep is an interesting choice for the first tour of the game, because he was responsible for the first reunification of ancient Egypt, after a few hundred years of political decline. There are parallels also to be drawn with the game story here, but I won't spoil any of that. Both regions had competing major cities, most notably Memphis in Lower Egypt and Thebes in Upper Egypt. There were different religious cults in both regions, each worshipping their own major gods. Those who have played the game will know how enthralling it is to walk around the sprawling metropolitan areas of ancient Egypt. It's worth keeping in mind that the game is set towards the end of the civilization in the New Kingdom, during the reigns of Ptolemy XIII and Cleopatra, a time when religious cults were diverse and plentiful. So the architecture we see is but a snapshot of time and an artist's impression at that, though a well-constructed and beautifully captivating one too. The Temple of Ptah, depicted here, was a location of some religious significance. We'll see this in another tour when we delve into the aspect of ancient Egyptian culture and religion. Many of the temples were designed in such a way as to represent the two regions, and ceremonies often incorporated Upper and Lower Egypt in their rituals. This is a beautifully carved perfume burner with a unified Egypt knot. Despite the information of the photograph being available at the top here, I couldn't find much about this relic, unfortunately. A reverse image search led me to an Asian blog that I can't read. The link is in the description for anyone that might be able to tell us a little bit more about it. Anything else? That brings us to the end of our first look at, and in-depth analysis of, Assassin's Creed Origins Discovery Tour. We'll call it Extra. If you enjoyed watching, please do join in on the research right below in the comments, or let me know which tour of Egypt you'd like to see next. Please share and subscribe for more Discovery Tour Extras.